<laughs> Rob, quick, run in real quick. What'd you think? It was epic. Based. <laughs> I raised. <laughs> Birds on film. Birds, Birds on, on film. film. Birds, Birds on, on film. film. My hey. name is Big Dust Dustin Wilson, joined as ever by my co my co-birds. Killian McMurphy. Killian, how the hell are you, bud? And special guest, um, filmmaker extraordinaire, Kyle Walls. Kyle, how the hell are you? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good? Pretty, pretty good. I see you got a, 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 a second hat underneath that. What is that? What is that? Let, 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 let's get a little peek at it. Traitor. Uh, don't, yeah. ever, <laughs> don't ever show that ever again. We did see that shit. We saw <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sonic on film. Sonic, Sonic on film. Sonic, Sonic on film. film. So um, we literally just got back from the theater. Killian still got the pop, <laughs> and I think the the dirt, the drinky drink. <laughs> so, Kyle, if if I may ask uh, t ask you, I remember seeing it with you, yeah. and you said that you were too big on the first one, right? No, I, I um I thought it was a little too formulaic. I, mm -hmm. I um like like it basically was just like Hop or like all these other movies where it's like the furry little man with his uh, with human companion. But it was way, way better than any of those movies, in my opinion. I think it took that formula, like yes, it was very formulaic, but it took that formula of funny little furry guy comes to real world and it blew anything else. It blew out the chipmunks, Hop, all the, the Garfield movies. Oh my God, so much better than the Garfield <laughs> movies. I, I'm not arguing that. <laughs> But it's the best one of those movies could possibly be while still staying very true to the source material. I like, think it got a very good balance. It, it was a safe bet by the student. Right. I, I just, my thing is like with these like video game adaptations and even like pop culture adaptations like Alvin and the Chipmunks and stuff like that. It, it, it's like, I don't get why, like the, the studios are always like, you can't just make an adaptation of something, especially video games. They're like, we have to have some gimmick. Like they're in the real world or like uh, it's something else. And it's just like, I, I just, just give us more, just make these characters, make a compelling film with these characters and it'll sell to the fans and to people that maybe just know the character. And I think they were able to do that a lot with the second film. And that's why I, I vastly preferred this one. This film had uh, higher stakes. It felt yes. like there was a lot more going on um, I really liked the interesting father-son dynamic that yeah. was going on. That was actually like very interesting. Yeah, and that well was. Done. Yeah, that wasn't like um, it, like it, it was more of a friend relationship in the first. But I mean, it makes sense with Sonic being still a kid and yeah. like uh, him living with this older man. So of course they would have a uh, father-son dynamic. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, meow. I love how that relationship also reflects onto Tails and Sonic. When yeah. Tails meets Sonic and Tails takes so much, even when he meets Knuckles. Yes. Like he tells the Wachowski family special. Yeah. Um, and a lot of what you see with Donut Lord, Sonic emulates with these characters who are coming to Earth for the first time, teaching right. them the lessons that he was taught either in the first movie or early on in this film. Say what you will about the first one, and, uh, and we do, of course. I think there's some parts that are a little rough around the edges, but there is some like interesting things going on, like theming. There's genuine moments yeah. of like some beautiful, dramatic scenes. The baseball scene that yeah. you love so much. It's, I love the baseball scene. It's genuinely a good fucking scene. Makes yeah, me no, there's, there's, there's yeah. a lot of good. Yeah, there's a lot of good things in the first one. Yeah. It's just overall, I. I I, the, the plot structure didn't work for me in the first yeah. one, but I like I said the second one. But this one, like everything yeah. stepped up, everything's so much better. 
the action scenes are crazier. Jim yeah. Carrey is out of his fucking mind. He's, He's never even seen a rocker. No rocker in fucking I, sight. I don't think he had a script. Like genuinely. And I know <laughs> no a lot of I know, like, genuinely a lot of people like like people say all the time, like when somebody's doing a very improv y performance, like, I don't think he had a script. I think he just came in and did his thing. I literally think in this case he genuinely did. Because I a lot of his jokes were like not even really connected to what was happening. Yeah, it was just absurd. Like... <laughs> completely, completely so much of what he said felt like it was just from deep, <laughs> deep within Jim Carrey's own brain. <laughs> and Jeff Fowler, Jeff Fowler and Tyson Hess look around on set like... <laughs> Might as fucking well let this happen. Wait, he's Jim Carrey. Yeah, we can't. They filming the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I think they literally just animate around Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. Like when he's messing with the the keyboard little thing and the fucking yeah. hand things. And the uh, uh, that's another thing. The, the animation in this film, vastly superior. There's a couple scenes that I say... Eh. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, not a lot, but a few times where the Mobian characters interact with the real world. Mm -hmm. Where I'm kind of like, eh. Looks better than it did in the trailer. Mm -hmm. They have made improvements since then. But also some green screen stuff, particularly um, when Jim Carrey is in Ice Cap Zone. And he's, yeah. he's flying around in the little egg oh, mobile. Oh, I noticed that too. Yeah, no, that looked that looked really bad. I, yeah. I did notice that because like he's he, they like didn't do any lighting on Jim Carrey at all. He just looks like he's brightly lit like on a set. Yeah, <laughs> he looks. <laughs> and he's just standing he's just keyed in. Yeah, no, it's very obvious. Yeah, completely out that. of place. Yeah, it, I noticed that completely. The one main thing that I disliked is the 15 minute interlude that we have towards the third act of Rachel. And like, there's a part of me, and I don't know if it's just me being a fan of Sonic and wanting to like the film as much as I do. There's a part of me that almost thinks it's a joke that she's given like this big I, plot. I read that completely as the case. You think? Yeah, I, okay. no, I, I think so. I, I think it's a bit, yeah. Okay. When the plate. <laughs> When the plane goes across in the yes. background and the orchestral score hits, I think they are completely taken. And I was it. laughing the whole time and saying like, "This is absurd." Damn. I just yeah. think maybe it went on for a touch too long. Yeah. I think if we cut that I mean, like short maybe, a little I mean, bit, maybe they could cut that a little bit. I, I, but if you're talking about just the scene with like Rachel, it's like mm -hmm. that's entirely a bit. I think like okay. at the yeah. end where like she's like coming in with a golf cart and like all that, <laughs> like that's entirely a bit. I very think. goofy. But very at the funny. same time, it was very important to establish Gun. Yes. The yeah. Guardian of United Nations or whatever. Yeah. The acronym led, is led by Olive Garden. Bet uh, who? Oh my god, Olive Garden guy. <laughs> Olive Garden guy is the gun commander? <laughs> what? Have you tried their never ending pasta bowl? It never ends. I love that. I think Olive Garden guy is the perfect gun commander. So what Take the all the piss. I, uh, in the theater, I looked over at Bobby and I just said, I really like this, like, retcon of, like, because the, because the, um, the, the, the corporate sponsorship of, of Olive Garden in the first one is like, they they knew it was ridiculous, they were playing it as a bit, but it was still like really glaring. Yeah. And it's funny because they've done this like little retcon where they're like, oh, he's just weird. It's just like, oh, sir, what are, what are we going to do? It's like, uh, send her a gift card. That is just like, he's just a weird dude. Speaking of sponsorships, <laughs> boys, I might go down to my local, uh, my local Chevy dealership. <laughs> get a Colorado. Get a Colorado. Get a 2022 Colorado. That was one of the most insufferable parts of the just film a, for me. Just a big, beautiful shot of this vehicle. <laughs> the the door opens. You see Colorado hits. The sunlight glares off of it. It was a commercial. And the the worst part about it is that James Marston and Sonic are having this touching father son moment during it and I've seen this film twice now and all I can do is scream about how I'm looking at a car commercial. I want to be invested so bad but in that moment 
when you just see this drone shot of a Chevy Colorado put it in reverse and pull off. I can't think of anything but 0% uh, APR for 72 months. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog, Malaysia Kajang, Manaju McDonald's. I love capitalism as much as the next guy. <laughs> I've seen every episode of Bar Rescue. Yes. But good grief, um, when you're trying to connect with me emotionally, don't show me a beautiful drone shot of the 2022 Chevy Colorado. That's the thing, like, when I'm in the scene, I want to feel something. And I want to, And like, I don't want to feel, I better get to my local <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to feel I need a fucking Chevy Colorado. I need it so bad. Do you think, like, they paid extra to put it in an important scene? Like, they're like, the Chevy has to be in an important it's scene. It's the final <laughs> scene! I always would love to see the pay structure. Yeah. <laughs> of, like, of, of yeah. like, this gets you this much. This gets you, uh, we'll show your, your logo. But think about how much that was present in the first film. Yes. You yeah. didn't just have Olive Garden. You also had the Zillow. Ad, which the Zillow ad was rough. Oh, that was a rough Very rough. Yeah. Hey, what are those? Apartments for rent I found on Zillow. Besides big nasty capitalism, because, you know, it's a video game. It's all marketing at the end of the day. I loved it. I, yeah. I was emotionally yeah. invested in a bunch of scenes. There's a scene where Tails says... My technology found you a long time ago, and I've been watching you, and I've been weird my whole life, but you're weird too, and everything that makes you weird also makes you awesome, and I love that, and that's why I've gravitated to you this whole time, and that makes me emotional every time I watch the film, twice now, making me emotional right now talking about it, because I feel like that's such a good metaphor for us weird fucking Sonic fans <laughs> that gravitate towards these funny furry animals. Yeah. I, I feel like you're weird, we're weird too, and we're all awesome because of it. It's, it's so deep, such a deep line. The scenes with Knuckles and Sonic on the beach. It's my favorite scene. I was surprised, yeah. I was like, oh my god, this is like, this is gripping. This yeah. is getting me. Yeah, it was, and it was Idris Elba, like, put it in another fucking stellar performance. Yeah. The standout character of the film, um, I've heard some people say, like, oh, Tails was secondary, Tails was there to just explain the plot, and, like, there's a point to be made that Tails, in any iteration, that's what he's there for. He's the smart guy that explains the plot. So anyway... These aliens are made up of Sorry, really Tails, if this looks good to the viewers. Knuckles just stood out. Knuckles, Idris Elba just crushed the role. So much comic relief yeah. Yeah. in a subtle way that they haven't got with the character in the video games in such a long time. Hey, little fella. Oh, gosh, you're cute. He's just a big, dumb goofball. Yeah. It's brawn, he's not the brain. Exactly. But like they they take it yeah, I agree, they take it a little too literally nowadays where it's uh it's like Oh, I don't I don't know. But he's like perfect in this. He's yeah, got yes. yeah. It, he's not like a mindless he's, Yeah, no, he's drone. not he's not an idiot. He's just like he's just not very like like well, especially they, they, they play up the fish out of water aspect a right. lot more than like yeah, like it's a lot a lot of his Dumbness is just like, I don't understand anything about this culture or these people. Do I look like I need your power? First, do you think Jim Carrey's actually retired? You know, uh, surprisingly, even though I'm wearing a Mario hat and a Sonic review, uh, this might be my most controversial thing that I'm going to say. I think Jim Carrey is a little... Well, I mean, obviously, he's weird, but he's, just, he's a little pretentious. I, I almost feel like we shouldn't take that interview too seriously. I feel like he was just talking, you know, like, I have enough, I am enough, you know? I just, yeah, it's just like, I, he'll probably come back. It's about I, I don't, nonsense. Yes, I, I think so. I mean, if you've seen uh, Jim and Andy, they... <laughs> yeah. Because I love you. I'm not angry because I want to try to not give you support. Too late! Too late! I'd hope he'd come back because I, I think he did a pretty good job as as Robotnik and, uh, and like I, I it think it, it would I mean granted even though we'll get like like we'll, we'll, there there's other villains they could take mm -hmm. such as Mammoth Mobile. Um, <laughs> 
took the words out of my mouth. Let's show a picture of them. Look at that. Can you believe that that's an actual Sonic character? <laughs> there were legal battles for this fuzzy fucking gangster elephant. I get it. I get it. I that's get a thug it. ass motherfucker yeah, right there. Bad. Look at that. So, fellas, after a nice little talk, a nice little conversation, uh, typical wrapping up thoughts, you know, um, we asked the question here on Birds on Film Does it honk? Hi. Does this movie honk? I, you know, I've watched. I, 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 yeah, it honks. Okay, okay, okay. sure, sure. <laughs> My <yeah>. man. My <laughs> man. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, you're going in for kind of a fun ride. Like, don't, don't expect an Oscar film. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, <laughs> it's something. It reminds me of like a Marvel movie or like a superhero, genuine superhero movie. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I have no issues with it on that level at all. Above it being a fun. Right. I uh, I'll say I, I think it honks as well. Um, I think it um, uh, there's a lot of very fun elements to the film. Uh, not much bad from it. No, like, honestly, like I'm. I, I don't have many issues with it. No. overall, I mean it's just it's a lot of fun. I'd probably see it again. I'd, yeah. I'd definitely like watch it if it's ever on and just vibe, you know. Yeah. Uh, and of course we have this guy. What do you think? Does it honk? It absolutely honks. It's it's. I've just been referring to it as the film <laughs> for the past week. I've already seen it twice. It just came out today, and I've already seen it twice. Uh, I love it so much. I think Idris Elba knocked it out of the park. Were there stuff that I wanted as a fan? Absolutely. But I'm not the stupid fan that complains because I didn't get exactly what I want. Yeah. Because, in a way, I got all that I could ever want. From this film, I had so much fun. Team Rachel, Rachel Supremacy. <laughs> she is my queen and my goddess forever. I love you, Rachel. Rachel's fun. This is she's the, she. That's the villain in the third one. She, Rachel. What if Rachel. She, what if, what if, she, if, she, what if she, she's Maria and she lost her memory? <laughs> <laughs> Big brain slide. <laughs> what if she is the catalyst? Thank you.